right? It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really exist. There is no LSU juggernaut of 2019. It doesn't really exist, right? It, I take that back. Even LSU got played close by Auburn, right, mm-hmm. last year. Shout out to LSU fans. I'm going to get to y'all a little <laughs> bit. Year. Y'all got 48, 40, 11. 48, 11. Yeah. yeah. I got stories. I got stories. I got stories. Anyway, all to make your point about how, for me, this is the most fun. Because ain't none of y'all no good. And everybody's got an argument. Meanwhile, Coastal Carolina is like, we're 5-0. and When do we get into the playoff? We would like to know. Thank you. <laughs> BYU, we're 7-0. and When do we get in the playoff? Thank you. Thank you. Any, any time now, you can, you can let us know. And USC, Oregon, Arizona State, all of them, they start playing on Saturday. Being like, hey, look, what? we're going to run the table. When do we get in the playoff? I can't wait. I can't wait. We're going to end up with an undefeated Coastal Carolina, an undefeated BYU, I hope an undefeated Pac-12 team, an undefeated Ohio State, an undefeated Alabama, and an undefeated Clemson. That's six teams. That's six teams. And they're going to automatically disqualify two of them while they get to walk around as the national champs. We're going to have at least three national champions. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. First off, that's that's always the fun part. I'm talking about the, the this middle part. That's always going to be the fun part. It's looking like five and six. I bet you're pretty salty, huh? Y'all didn't even get a chance, did you? Mm, that's tough. <laughs> po- Pole said what now? Man. Oh, man. Pole said what now? Oklahoma State. Pole said what now? N- number, number what? Number six. Okay. All right. So, like... Uh, alongside it, the Notre Dame Clemson game, right? Laura's largest cocktail party. But with Notre Dame Clemson, it's got my full attention because there's so many cool storylines, right? First of which is Ian Book, Jafar Armstrong. I think like there's one other t- player that I'm missing, Avery Avery Davis. All were on that 2018 Notre Dame team that got destroyed by Clemson in the Cotton Bowl college football playoff. Remember, they're, they're 12-0 and 0 going into that, but they're soft 12-0, and 0, and we're all going, they're not that good. And USC had them on the ropes. 5-7 and seven USC had them on the ropes. Should have won that game, did not. That team had a Loey Gilman, had Julian Love, who was a Paycom Jim Thorpe Award finalist, had Dexter Williams, right? Had Phil Jerkovic as the third-string quarterback. You know, dude at Boston College, damn near beat Clemson last week. That was Notre Dame. Now, this year, you got Notre Dame, who has to play for a conference championship to get into the playoff, which I love. Ian Book going into a year in which he has to prove to everybody that he's just not, you know, Yankee Jake Fromm. Jafar Armstrong has been moved to wide receiver because that's how trash they are out there. You got Chris Tyree behind a Kyron Williams who has become your go-to player, right? You are a power run team now. And you are hoping that your defense that nobody can point to is saying, yo, that dude is going to win some individual award, can continue to do what they did. Like, the thing that is wild about Notre Dame, they run roughshod over Florida State, 42-26, which doesn't feel like a big deal. But they were the fifth-ranked team at the time when they did it. The next week, Florida State ran roughshod over the number five team in the country, North Carolina. So the ACC, as you have said, as we agree, is Clemson plus dudes. But, but Notre Dame is like, we're not dudes. And we're like, hey, look, remember when y'all played five ACC games in 2018? Y'all got destroyed in the college football playoff by the ACC champ? Yeah, y'all dudes. Y'all, y'all just dudes. Brian Kelly out here trying to be like, yo, man, uh, this is not the end-all, be-all for us. We're trying to win a conference championship. Well, you got to beat Clemson to do that. Well, do we? I don't think we do. I think, I think we just got to beat one of the two winningest teams. One of the two winningest teams. We get two chances to do this. But if you can't beat Clemson without Trevor Lawrence, can you beat Clemson? To say nothing to this, this is also not going to get enough run. You know, it, it's not, why is the media talking about this? That's a joke. That's not, it's not real. Anyway, why isn't the media talking about this? Justin Ross went ham against Notre Dame in that Cotton Bowl against Clemson. It was his coming out party, okay? And by ham, I do mean hard as a, yes. That was that dude. He hasn't played it all this year. They also haven't had a whole hell of a lot of Joseph Nada. And you're talking about Cornell Powell as being your go-to dude outside of Amari Rogers. Cornell Powell might not be the fifth best wide receiver on that team in a good year. 
And then you look at a Travis Etienne back there who's going, cool, I will carry this. I will be Alvin Kamara with Eddie George's thighs. Also, my favorite thing about Travis Etienne going into this game, he came back for a senior year. He didn't have to come back for a senior year, right? I called a man Popeyes because right. he's he from Jennings, Louisiana, but like during the quarantine, that man did not work out. That man ate Popeyes. Hey, self-care, man. I know, right? That's what Take I'm saying. Take care of yourself. That's what I'm saying. Came, came to camp, 20 pounds overweight, had to go lose all that weight. Still averages seven yards carry, right? Still ACC rushing record holder, uh, rec record holder. But also, what I love most about Travis Etienne is that my man's nickname as a true freshman was Stone Hands. <laughs> they would not throw him the ball. So one of the reasons he wanted to come back this year is to prove that he could catch the damn football out of the backfield. And against Boston College, he had seven catches for 140 yards. <laughs> He's taking him to the house. He also had a fumble on the six-inch line that was returned 100 yards to the house. So Travis Etienne needs to have one hell of a football game because he did have that against Notre Dame two years ago. Average eight yards per carry against that Notre Dame defense that had Jerry Tillery and them in it. So much is going on here. But a lot, the least of which is Brian Kelly feels like, you know, the regular person at Notre Dame right now because he knows what it means to play for a conference championship. Like he likes playing for conference championships as opposed to. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 2018, they played five games in five different locations on the road. Like they go into USC, they go into BYU, they go into wherever the hell it is they can get the games because they barnstorming to try to prove to the playoff committee that they deserve to be selected. Now they're like, no, we get to do what everybody else does. We get to do what Oklahoma does in the Big 12, what Clemson does in the ACC, which is win it and we in, right? We, we, we get to live that life. Wouldn't it be bad if they won this game and then they lost the championship game that we wanted them to play in 2018 so they wouldn't play in the playoff in 2018 in the first place? So much no, is going like, on here for me. That's the bit of shot and pride that we've always wanted as as football fans is to be able to like to have yet another way of saying that we don't particularly care for Notre Dame. If you say that, oh wow, y'all really good, made it to that, made the conference championship, drop that. That's a shame. <laughs> guess that. Guess that proves y'all shouldn't have been in the conference. Leave. <laughs> I say that it shouldn't been in the conference. They're in the conference of everything else besides football. It's like, hmm. I hope the money good. I hope that money helps you sleep good at night. It's what I refer to as an open marriage. With the ACC, right? And this year, you know, it's, it's state it's state mandated, you know? It's, it's how when you have to check that box on your taxes that says, you know, uh, head of household, the ACC is now the head of the Notre Dame household. If for one year only. I'm enjoying that. Say like COVID has closed the swingers club, so. The patriarchy uh, has come to Notre Dame. Like, is my room still good? I still got one, right? I'm so here for this. So on top of all this, right, Brent Venables' defense did not have defensive tackles Tyler Davis or linebackers Mike Jones and James Scott. Difficult for, like, Clemson to game plan for Notre Dame if they don't have their starters. To which my man Brian Kelly picks up the depth chart and says, I got a depth chart right here and starts playing daily fantasy football. I'll take their fourth linebacker, their fifth defensive tackle. Like, he's just doing that. No, I'm not giving them any handicaps. I don't give a damn if Trevor Lawrence is not playing. Have you seen this dude? I can't, I can't believe he wouldn't say his name, though. Like, I wanted to hear him say, Ui Unga Lele. <laughs> 